What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a new Ark Editions mod video today and today guys the Ceratosaurus has dropped for Ark Editions and this guy is incredible. So today guys I'll be going over how you can go about taming it, what you need and everything you will need to do and its abilities. So you currently see here up ahead in front of us there are a couple of these big boys in front of us. Now, these guys are terrifying to look at. We've actually got a 130 there. We might try and tame that one up. Now, in order to tame these guys up, you first need to be prepared. So, you will need some hemoglobin. Hemoglobin cocktail, sorry. It isn't hemoglobin, it's hemoglobin. Now, for this, you'll need 15 blood packs, 10 serrado spines, and 10 narcotics. Now, you receive these venom spines from killing other serratosauruses, which they aren't too difficult if you've got large carnivores, rexes, thylers, shadow manes, that sort of stuff. You can easily sort of deal with them. You can see here we've got a couple coming up on us, and we're just going to munch them here, and you'll see the serrato venom spines go straight into my inventory. Now, they are an item drop. So when you do kill them, they will be as an item cache. You can see here we've got 13 here, and we also got 11 from killing the other one. So these guys are not too difficult, like I mentioned, to kill. You can see there we've got 13 and another 11 in here. Nope, 38. Apparently we have killed a couple already. So uh, once you've done that, you then need to make the Hemogoblin uh, cocktail with the blood packs. That's the only sort of difficult part, but if you're on Fjorda or you've got a Desmodus, they're relatively easy to come across. Now, once you've successfully got your Hemogoblin cocktails, what you need to do then is find a Serratosaurus that you want to tame. So, you saw there we had a 130. We've got a couple other ones down here. These guys do spawn in grasslandy forests, so you shouldn't have too much difficult finding some. We're going to go for that level 95. Now, what I would recommend is trapping the Serratosaurus, as the tame can get... I'm not going to say tedious, but you will need to be sectioned off from wild dinos and the like, as that will generally help you deal with them. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab our Rhinoanathia here, and we're going to come across here, and we're going to grab this Serratosaurus, and we are going to take it to a trap that we have made earlier. There we go. Now these guys will damage your Rhinoanathia if you aren't careful. Obviously I'm in creative mode, so uh, I'm not going to take any damage from this thing trying to attack us. But generally, they will try to kill your Rhinoanathia. Now, I do believe you can also use Quetzals to pick them up, so do keep that in mind as well. Now, here is my trap I prepared earlier. We're just going to drop him in there. We've got our Anki down there ready to go. Now, I would recommend a tame with high health and a high armored saddle, because what you need to do is you then feed the Hemogoblin Cocktail to uh, your tame that you want to use. You can see here I've got 20 ready to go. Chuck that, consume it, and you'll see that your Anki will then, or whatever team you want to use, will have a stinky hemogoblin stench for 180 seconds. I don't know if you can actually attack on. Now you can see there our Anki is in the trap. He is on passive. He's only taken small amounts of damage. Obviously, if you've got a higher level Serratosaurus that you're trying to tame, you will take more damage. And you can see there it does pop up saying 6% drunk. We're just going to stand back here so he doesn't aggro on us. And the more he attacks the dino that has the hemogoblin cocktail in it, the more drunk it'll get. Essentially, you need to wait until it's 100% drunk, where it will allow you to passive tame it. Also, you can see that when it attacks, it goes up by a certain amount. So it was at 65%. It's gone up by 70%. The higher level the Serratosaurus, the lower that will go up as well. So I think for a max level, it's only like 3% per drunk status, so just keep that in mind as well if you are trying to tame up a higher level one. You can see here our Anki is doing A-OK, -okay, so you can use this on anything that the Serratosaurus would attack. So you should be have a host of dinos that you can sacrifice to the Serratosaurus. Not even sacrifice, just use as a bullet sponge essentially. So the Serratosaurus is at 93%. Once it hits that 100%, you'll see that it goes into a sort of drunken state, which we should be seeing shortly here, 98%. You had to do me dirty like that, didn't you? Couldn't go to the 100%. And just like that, the Serratosaurus is now drunk. Now you can see here, it will stop attacking your dino and it will just kind of wander around. This is where you will need to passive tame it. Now you can use uh, raw mutton. Extraordinary kibble is the best thing to use for the Serratosaurus, however. And that is the highest tier of kibble. And you can see here, it's a passive tame once that happens. All you need to do then is feed it the item that you want to use and wait for it to tame up. My man's neck is, or I should say my lady's neck is uh, definitely doing some things that it shouldn't be doing. It's going some wonky ways. I'm going to pick that up because it is definitely going to try and get out. And you can see here, we can also feed the raw mutton. Now, obviously the raw mutton won't do as much, but it is an alternative if you do not have kibble. 
and tamed up. Now, throughout my testing, I have never seen this guy uh, run out of that daze before. So like the torpor, the drunken daze, I've never seen it run out. But once you've tamed it up, you can craft its saddle. Its saddle requirement is level 75, I believe. And it's pretty easy to make. Fiber, hide, and a little bit of metal. Standard saddle crafting. Once you've made that up, chuck it on your Serratosaurus. And it has a host of abilities that it can use, which are really good. Now you can see down the bottom, we have a running speed bar. This bar will fill up the longer you run for. Obviously capping out at 100%. Once you hit 75%, however, you will start barraging through rocks and tree structures. So you can break through those with ease. Now this works effectively well in single player, which is where I currently am. However, on servers, you will have an issue where uh, it will probably lag out and you will lose run speed. Now, another cool ability of the Serratosaurus is once you hit that 75% run speed, if you hold down your secondary attack key, which is uh, the right mouse button, you'll actually do a charge attack, which does increase damage as well as a knockback, which is really effective. Now, this does deal more damage than your standard bite attack and standard secondary attack, which we'll move on to now. So your primary attack is a bite, which you can see me using here. There are a couple of different animations for that but it does some decent damage. Now, obviously our Serratosaurus wasn't max level. We haven't put any extra points in. So it's kind of got the same sort of power as a Carnosaur. Now you can currently see here, if we do our secondary attack, we have our spine attack, which is sort of like a headbutt. This uses your spine and activates the Serratosaurus's unique ability where he's able to heal you and your fellow carnivores based off the damage you deal to the enemies that have that blood poison effect. So you can see here, none of the dinos have it, but if we keep up trying to apply it, you'll see there that it has applied to the two scorpions. If we attack the scorpions, we will deal more damage. Now, if you have more Serratosauruses, this damage will stack up and the healing will also stack up as well, causing your carnivores to heal much more damage. Now, the Serratosaurus also has the ability to spin and bite, very similar to the Sarko. So if you are getting munched on from behind, you can simply turn around and bite them. And all you need to do to do that is move the camera and then hit the primary attack key. You also have a tail spin attack, which I found best to activate by using, uh, by facing the backwards end and then spinning around. Now, this also applies your blood poison effect as well. Uh, now, obviously it doesn't apply every secondary attack, which is a shame, but I feel like that would be very OP. Um, and you can see here that it does also apply it. So the way that it works is it's applied through the spines. So any of your secondary attacks will apply that blood poison debuff, which will result in your carnivores getting healed up. Another cool ability of the Serratosaurus is that he also does a slide sort of motion when you stop running, which I think is really cool. You can also do a slight drift with this and well, you can't pick up your speed, which kind of sucks, but it's still useful nonetheless. Now, You'll see here, it's going to be a little bit hard to show, but I am taking a bit of damage to show the blood poison healing. So you can see that we actually just got 50 health from the Deinonychus just actually attacking us. Is that because we're bleeding? Are we actually healing from our own bleed? Yes, so the dinos are attacking us and we're actually healing from that. Or is the Deinonychus actually healing from it? It is, they're, ve they're envenomed. They're getting envenomed from us. So, dinos attacking you also causes this debuff to apply to them, which is actually pretty cool because, and it also makes sense because you were covered in these spines. So anything attacking you, it makes sense to get the blood poison debuff. But you are able to do this in large packs of creatures and this will actually heal you massive amounts of health. Make sure you don't kill the creature, however, before the blood heal goes off because that will result in you not getting any healing whatsoever. Now you can see here, I've got a bunch of raptors around me and they'll all kill me up slowly. You can see that we just got a bunch of healing from them. And because they are all attacking me as well, the blood puff, the blood debuff is automatically being applied to them. Although I do need to be careful, I am starting to die. So we're just gonna start wailing into them and hopefully we get some healing from them. There we go, we got 52 healing. I may have summoned in too many raptors. But in terms of a medium-sized carnivore, this guy is really useful. I feel like he would have more versatility with a large uh, pack of carnivores, however, as that's when he'll really start to shine because he will be able to heal all the carnivores in the area. He's kind of more like an aggressive Daedon. 
Uh, so, and also if you have more serrated sauruses, the bleed will stack, so you can do more damage like that as well. Uh, I have to be very careful here because this Ceratosaurus is a very low to death. Now, as well as this, the longer you use the spine attacks on the creature that you're attacking as well, the longer the debuff will last for. Obviously, if you've got multiple Ceratosauruses attacking at once, you should be able to keep this debuff up for quite a long time as well. So you saw there that we did kind of reapply it. We got the healing and then it's sort of stuck around. So if you keep using your secondary attack, this is how you keep that debuff lasting longer. You can see there, the debuff is still going and we did just get some healing from it. It has worn off, however. So it does state that you will need multiple Serratosauruses in order to keep the debuff going. So these guys would function very similarly to an aloe pack sort of, where if you have multiple of them, you're going to be buffing each other up and also healing each other quite substantially. But that is the newest Ark Edition's dino to come to the Arcs, the Serratosaurus. I really think this guy's cool. I think he's going to have a lot of uses in, teams, in terms of boss fights as well. Once you level them up and get some decent lines going and everything like that, you'll be able to heal all your carnivals that you take into boss fights really effectively. So I think this guy's a great addition and you guys should definitely check out the mod if you're able to. But that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. Nonetheless, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe down below for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.